Uh, I'm Florence. I'm Nick. I'm Lewis. And I'm Tom. We are Dry, dry cleaning. cleaning. And, and these, these are the records, records in, in my life. life. How are you guys today? Very, very, very well. Yeah. Are, are you in the London office or the, uh, you're in the London office, right? We are, yeah. First and foremost, number one, thank you guys so much for doing, uh, for doing records in my life. I'm, I'm a fan. I really appreciate it. Like on a personal note, I just saw you guys in Los Angeles at Primavera in Los oh, Angeles. And it was, oh, it was a fan. Yeah, it was fantastic. And you guys look like, I mean, the important thing is you guys look like you were having a great time. Did you, how did you enjoy it? Was it fun or? Getting sunburned. Yeah, yeah we were getting <laughs> oh, sunburned. Yeah. I was getting, getting sunburned live, but um, it, it was great. It was, it was really, really nice. Yeah, really it was such fun. a nice yeah. crowd. Love and it was, it was beautiful weather. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd was, I mean, yeah, the crowd loved it. And you guys put on a great set. Congratulations on your on your forthcoming release, Stump Work. Uh, it's about it's just about to drop, and um, an exciting and an emotional record. I mean, you work with John Parrish, and and it was kind of an emotional time. I'm sorry for like the circumstances, but tell us, tell me a bit about working with John Parrish and the experience of the recording. Ooh, John is John is fabulous. He's a great guy. He's He's our friend now. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. he, we've done two records with him and the relationship continues to to blossom. Mm. He's wonderful to work with, you know, he's 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 a, he's a really great guy. Mm -hmm. He's like a he's you know, he, the way he works is quite challenging. He's he kind of demands the most from you as a musician and uh, I think we're people that welcome that. So, um, the opportunity to do a second one with him with him was a bit of a no-brainer really we were really excited to do that again yeah we met we met him on the first day of recording new long leg we'd only met on zoom so it was nice to do a second record with him because like you know we only really like spent two weeks with him sort of ever you know what i mean like we hadn't really met him in person until until that that time so it was nice to record with him again just to kind of like firm up the friendship, basically. I think we knew that there was more we could get from him and he knew there was more he could get from us as well. As in, we, if we had more time together, um, towards the end of that recording New Long Leg, we kind of, uh, with a bit more time, was expanded on certain songs and it was all quite excited about what we could possibly do together. I mean, the record came in a hurry because it was you. I, I close, right, to the when you finished off New Long Leg, uh the album came pretty quickly it sounded like the tap was really running and you guys really wanted to get back in the studio because you were gelling right it was a pretty oh. short time frame that basically is the, the narrative yeah i mean essentially we released the first record and did like a month of press interviews and stuff which at that time we were still doing on zoom at home um normally when an album drops the band is packed into a van and you basically tour the world for 18 months uh but that didn't happen. We released an album, did the press, and then I remember one day our manager said, "There's no more interviews." And we were like, "Oh!" Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we just went started writing. We'd already written a few songs, uh, so we just went straight back to writing again. Really, and, and we kind of saw the window of opportunity. If we didn't do it then, we'd probably be doing it now. Mm. Yeah. Um, sure. So it's like, yeah, we had to just we had that decision to make. Mm. I mean, I, I, the good thing about that is that when you when you whenever you make anything. If you're the maker of it, you're kind of more focusing on what you didn't do and what you got wrong or what you'd like to do differently. So, I mean, I can imagine that most bands would do what we did, but they don't get the chance because you're, you know, we're on tour. We're not going to get the chance. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as this one comes out, we're touring again. So You have a full packed itinerary. And I got to ask you this question because and I know a million people have asked you this question and it's probably been asked a million times. <laughs> Sorry, the record cover. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you've been asked. And, and, and before I let you answer, sorry, what did the record company say when you when you first approached them with the artwork? I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing. It's, just, it's, 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 it's genius. I mean, it's just kind of like, yeah, this is it. I mean, this is life. It's kind of a, a metaphor for life, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it says a lot for our record company that they really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. like. Oh, we yeah. never had we never like we really have a lot of freedom with the kinds of artwork 
we use and what we do and then also like th this was done by somebody else it's done by rotting dean bazaar who did the scratch card lanyard video and um and yeah there was never any pushback <laughs> can't sing my labels praises loudly enough i mean yeah. i think when we first saw it we, we thought it was beautiful i don't I, it's more that since other people have seen it and they've had a strong reaction to it that we realized mm. it was shocking at all i don't i, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if yeah. label for it was yeah. shocking either it wasn't something that became public yeah yeah it, it, it's not that it's shocking it's a little i i like it it's just kind of like yeah that that's basically it right i mean you wake up and it's uh you know you hit the shower and there's a you know a hair on on, on the floor right of the shower or the tub right that that's how life is it's only really shocking if you can guarantee it's not yours you know I mean? <laughs> right right yeah, i was mean, thinking I live a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we talked about the we talked about this before this like the it's an old seinfeld gag right that like when hair is on your head it's like beautiful oh you've got beautiful hair and then as right. soon as one detaches itself and you find it in the tub or on the soap then you're like oh my god it's a hair and like, right uh right. and it's probably his one funny joke <laughs> <laughs> thanks so, for mentioning yeah. seinfeld that's great i i, I love that so, do you have a favorite song off the record or one you're most proud of Mm. I think probably Which, all of us have individually changes all the time. Mine changes yeah. daily, really. Yeah. I've got three. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Tell us. Silence. Um, well, <laughs> uh, I, well, Hot Penny Day, I kind of, I, I was like, the, Penny Day. I was like the torch carrier for that for a long time. It's like, because it's quite like, it's probably the strangest song we've done. Sorry. Sorry. Tonally, like, it's got a lot of different, well, it's got a different vibe to it, really, and I, I'm really keen on that. Uh, Driver's story is just so much fun to play. It's like, I don't know, sometimes a song will come along and you just love playing it. Your hands, like, they sort of like they're just made for playing it or something, I don't know. Um, and No Decent Shoes for Rain, I think, is uh, particularly when John responded to it, when he first heard it, I think we did a take of it and he was, he, you could see he was kind of quite emotional about mm. it. I think we all felt the same about it. It's just like, a, yeah. Mm. He's that, very complimentary about that one. He doesn't pay a lot of compliments. But yeah, he's that's very always, complimentary. Yeah, he he was listening to it once, and when you listen to things, you're on a sofa like this, and he's in front of you with his back to you, looking at the mixing desk. Because the speakers are pointing this way, not because he hates us. <laughs> not, 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 not there to look at you, but, um, he listened back to it and he turned around and he goes, "That's fucking amazing." And like he, wow. never, he never really gives you compliments like that. He's not yeah. really that kind of guy. But when he said that, it was kind of like a chilled up the spine moment. So. Yeah. He's got a good, good uh, list of bands that he's worked with. It's pretty high praise, but uh, a YouTube interview we've been recently where he says some nice stuff about us, and we've been loving it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's like that's so lame, isn't it? Yeah. But we were all watching it like, oh my god, watch it, watch it. Partly, partly because he doesn't. He's not the kind of guy who patch on the back all the time. Yeah. If you do, if you do something good in the studio, normally he just goes, okay, let's yeah. move on. <laughs> So. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So you guys tell, give us a couple more songs from you. We haven't heard which, which one are your favorites. At the moment, I'm really enjoying Anna Cools from the Arctic, as mm -hmm. in I really like it shows another side of us. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the contrast of all well, the singles that have come out so far and how that sits. I think it kind of shows a nice, I think the term post-punk is a bad rep at the moment based on what people use it to describe. But I think that for me is that kind of dubby post-punk that I would think about when I think about post-punk. Mm -hmm. I like Conservative Hell, um, particularly because of how it sort of like transformed in the studio. It was like very sort of like short, kind of jangly song, and then it sort of wound up with like wounds on it, and then with this whole sort of like um, sort of like gloopy, kind of dreamy sort of section at the end. And um, yeah, I really like it, almost because I don't recognise it. You know what I mean? It's mm. easier. It's easier to kind of love a song if you don't feel like. I don't know, it's almost like a little bit removed because it changed so much. I really like yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely have songs that I really, that are my favourites, but I think my overwhelming feeling with the record is that I'm way more, I get a lot more satisfaction from having finished this one than I did the last. Uh, it feels like a way more complete record to me and like a... Um, it's something I, I'm actually listening to. I got a CD, a copy of the CD the other day, and I have it in my car, mm -hmm. and I and I listen to it. Uh, like whereas with New Long Leg, I was kind of like, now it's done. I don't need to listen to it anymore. But I actually I feel kind of like I'm actively enjoying listening to this one. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the overwhelming feeling for me. Like 
yeah, which has taken me by surprise a little. Mm. Your, now, your press release says, and, and I can kind of attest a little bit, because I just, like I mentioned before, I saw you guys in LA, I think, two or three weeks ago. And so you take a lot of, of your um, influence from Guided by Voices, number one. This is a two-part question. And But when I saw you guys live, I heard a lot of snippets of, I might be completely off base, of, of TV on the radio. So that's, I heard a lot of influences. Am I far off the mark on that one? And... I would like your favorite records by Guided by Voices and TV on the radio, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, influencers are a funny thing, aren't they? Because it's like to each their own, you know? It's like yeah. what you hear from us is like, you're right. I mean, if you hear that, that's great. I mean, but I don't know about albums for TV on the radio, I guess we turn it Cook Mountain, but there's actually a Letterman performance of them doing Wolf Like Me. Mm. And they don't do it in the ambient way it is on the record. They do it, they sort of like just crank up the, the amps and they absolutely go for it. And it's absolutely amazing. Mm. Like that that version of that song. Is there a recording of it like that? No, no, there isn't, no. Yeah. The TV on the radio, like, I, I can't honestly say they, they would maybe, I don't know if they're like a direct influence on us, but I kind of, obviously they're a 4AD band, they were a 4AD band. I see them as like maybe having similar influences to us or kind of maybe that they kind of formulate things in a similar way uh, and then they're interested in similar things. I was really into them when I was younger, when their first record came out. I actually paid quite a lot of money to have a, mm. a, a vinyl imported from the US. And then like a week later, I found it in a record store. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, like a gatefold record with like, um, you know, uh, like over a couple of uh, vinyls, and then there's like some really nice etchings in it. Um, but I was, yeah, I was, I was really, really into that band uh, when I was probably about 20, 21, something like that. And they're they're cool as hell. You know, they really made like an amazing like sound together. They had a great sound. When we were speaking about producers, though, was it the guitarist who produced it? His name, David, David Steve, yeah. yeah, there's a name we spoke about a little bit. Uh, Dave Sidetech, did you say or? Yeah, yeah, he's he's done he's done a lot of stuff in the past few years. And what about Guided by Voices? Because they have a in a crazy extensive catalog. I mean, they've between his between Robert Pollard solo stuff and yeah. you know the GBBs. Is there a favorite? Just because they were mentioned a few times in your in your press bio, I I was uh, curious about that. Yeah, just it was just it really that um, we were quite keen to get back to some of the earlier sort of way we were making quite short, snappy little melodic songs. Um, and I think those early songs, people were like, oh, this is post-punk. But they made me think of Guided by Voices a lot more. So things like uh, Game of Pricks or um, Pimple Zoo or Kicker, Kicker of Elves. <laughs> Kicker of Elves. <laughs> you know, that's, that's such a good chorus. It goes, kick, 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 Kicker of Elves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that really, like, really good. When they first got on Matador and he had the original lineup still, um, they were doing just like, so I guess B-1000 and... Uh, yeah, that that kind of period, they did propeller and all that kind of stuff. I, I actually quite like the. He he got rid of all that band and did another incarnation of the band. I think some of that's quite nice. Like Girls of Wild Strawberry, I think is an incredibly beautiful song. Just like just chiming twelve string guitars and backbeat drums. It's about two minutes long, but it's just incredible melodies. They seem to pack more melody in than most mm. bands do in an album. They also pack yeah. more songs into a set than most bands as well. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 so, they, they sometimes do four hour gigs and they own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite amazing, actually. I don't know if you've ever got, if you follow them on Instagram, but there's song, you see the song list. There's like 40, I know they're a minute and a half long, a minute, 30 seconds, whatever. There's like 40, 50 tracks on, on, on their song <laughs> list. I saw those set lists on Instagram and was, it was like a big column after column after column. And then halfway through, there was two songs and he'd done an arrow. So he'd like, I do that one there. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, what's it for that, mate? But obviously, it does. God bless, God bless Robert Pollard. I mean, it, it's uh, he's a machine, and he still does those those super high uh, kicks. You know what I mean? And and uh, yeah. that's after a case of Budweiser. Like, sorry, I don't whatever like six or whatever Budweisers. <laughs> <laughs> what what um, what's a good record? I mean, you guys are just about to hit the road, so what's a good record to relax to when you're just about to fly? If you're an uncomfortable flyer, mm -hmm. traveling music. I think yeah. Do you know what? I have to check. I'm I'm going to check my notes. It's an album called Quiet Signs by Jessica Pratt. Do you know, do you know? Yeah. I mean, I love, 
that record so much. It's like, um, it's so, there's something about the sound of it, like it was recorded in a church or something, just like the, the sort of echo around everything on that album. And it sounds like it was all recorded in one sitting, you know? It's like very atmospheric, sort of like takes you somewhere, very calm. Mm. And it's like, they're quite sort of, um, they're quite sort of um, thoughtful songs, but they're not, they're not necessarily sad. They're kind of, they're kind of sweet and, um, and, and kind of fairly sort of happy, but a little bit sort of mournful at the same time. I don't know, it's just like this really nice, like tone that I find I find really relaxing. I listen to that album all the time, like on on planes or anywhere that I'm likely to feel stressed. <laughs> I always rare that. moments. Anyone else have any contributions? Well, I kind of for me, um the the act of constant movement of travel, I kind of that's when I listen to sort of the heaviest music I listen to. Because it matches what I'm seeing visually out the window. There's so much going on visually. I need something that matches it with my in my brain. What's the first record that comes comes to your mind? Relationship of Command by Out of Driving, um, particularly because when I first well, at the point in my life when I heard it, I was kind of just from the cusp of moving from being into indie music, which is quite you know quite down, like things like Radiohead and stuff like that, and then getting into like hardcore and punk, which was quite quite aggressive. What I liked about relationship of command, it was urgent and really quite no, not violent as such, but it was dramatic, but it was danceable and they danced as well. And I remember they played on TV on Jules Holland and they went absolute I've never seen anything it's like quite it. A famous performance. <laughs> they didn't really like Omar and Cedric didn't really play or sing anything. They just just danced and like grabbed chairs and like throwing them around. And it just seems so cathartic. So for travel, I sort of try and look for something a bit like that. Yeah. Dry cleaning. Thank you again for being on Records of My Life. We have one more question on the 30 second speed round at the end, which is fun. I know you just got the signal, I think, to, to get going. But what, what would be the Craigslist or high school bulletin board ad which would bring you guys together? If you like, I'm a bass player and, and I love. Oh my it's God. It'd be, it'd be very long list. Well, yeah. no, but, or it could be something like, I guess. Like some of our Venn diagram bands, if you think about like what would be in the middle, it's probably like the B52s, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, or Deftones, or Interpol, or Interpol. Interpol or... Yeah. <laughs> Can you give us some title record uh, record titles? On the bright it light. is records of my life. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. on the bright lights, of, like 100, percent it's an incredible record. Also, B52s album B52s yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. is uh, something I listen to a Light, lot. Light kid. food and B52s. Yeah, yeah. sign up here. Yeah. yeah. We did come how we did start. I think we would all <laughs> respond to that. White, white pony, I'd say. Yeah. Pony. Yeah, quite possibly. The, I, I would say we're kind of the antithesis of that band, though, because like our band is just a friendship. That's kind of what it is. Like, and it's not just happened because we were in a band together. We were, we were all good friends before we started doing this. And I think that's the kind of special ingredient that means, you know, we couldn't have been formed out the back of the enemy or whatever because yeah. We're not strangers. That's kind of like the kind of secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's great. You guys are all your friends and family at the same at mm. the same time. It's important. OK, speed round. Thanks again, guys, for being on the show. Weed, wine or water to listen to or to write your to write music, your music, obviously. Mm. Do we individually answer? Oh, you can. Or you can answer together or one, you know, I'm, I'm saying water. Oh, that's true. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big hydrator. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would agree with that. that. Is. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to writing water, you don't write anything good. No. Pissed. We rarely drink. We <laughs> drink by writing. No. I'm gonna go weed though. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. We different. Are, <laughs> listening to one of your favorite records. Wine. Wine. Yeah. Definitely. Weed. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. There's, you get Sorry. To, there's like a sweet spot you get to when you're drunk when your favorite record sounds incredible. Yeah. Right. Every day. <laughs> Coffee or tea with an artist, alive or dead? Ooh. Coffee and dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'd go coffee with David Bowie. I'd go tea with George Michael. Ooh, oh, nice. This is, this that's good. Idea. I'm going to say uh, coffee with Marky e. Smith. Oh, nice. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a cup of tea with Elton John. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. So I'm still, I'm still hoping that that might happen. 
album of your high school years. Whoa. Oh, wow. So oh, my God. Album of our high school years. Oh, well, for me, it'd be uh, Is This It by The Strokes. That, that was definitely one that I listened to then and it's still I still listen to and it still reminds me of a lot of moments, especially being on the train when you had like a little CD player, every station to get the same train now, I can know which track's going to come on. I can't believe you've taken that one. That's Sorry. definitely mine as well. So, oh, should I drink more? So <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say the Blue album by Weezer, which is something I discovered. I think the Green album kind of came out more when I was in high school. And at that point I went back and found that and that was like, you know, that was, that was great. I'm going to go with What's the Story, Morning Glory of Oasis. Like that, it was like a, it impacted everyone so much that people, I had friends that started to talk with a Manchester accent. Everyone started to, every, everyone started to walk differently. Everyone started to walk. We'd walk to double maths like Liam Gallagher. <laughs> That's great. Words of wisdom for your fans and our audience. Very much. <laughs> oh i'm gonna God. go wholesome i'm gonna say be yourself oh i'm gonna say smile this is really nice to look into the crowd and see people smile one of my favorite yeah. things people have their eyes closed and they're just smiling mm -hmm. while listening to the band yeah things are shit but they're gonna be okay <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the best. That's the best wisdom. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much. Have a great day. I, I appreciate hey, it. We'll see yeah. you in Vancouver. Yeah, Good luck and congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Hi, I'm Mark Henning, the director and editor of Records in My Life. Guess you liked it because we're here at the end of the video. So hit like, leave us a comment and subscribe. And if you're feeling supportive, consider clicking over to patreon.com forward slash RIMLTV and you can help us out there. Cheers. See you next time.